Hey everyone, this video will serve as a guide and trailer for the Joe Van channel. It's a bit of a variety show, so I can understand feeling lost, but no longer. Now I will focus on four main topics. Movies in review, monkeys in review, thoughts pieces, and trends with Joe Van. These four playlists can be found below on my channel page. Thanks, and without any further ado, it's time to jump in to this year's proper introductions. In the year 2200, a pill was invented to give humanity immortality, but it came at a cost. You had to constantly drink water, and it left you bald, like me, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. If you stayed on top of it then great. But to those that forgot, their hair grew. They would become ostracized by society, and the longer they didn't drink water, the more rapid they became, until falling into a coma, where they would die. Wow! Ooh, there we go. Bought myself some time. Hey everybody, how's it going? Joe Van here, if you didn't know already. And yeah, let's go over some proper introductions. So I've done this a number of times now. What new stories can I bring to the table here? I figure I'll jump way back. I'm gonna start with St. Rafe's because I was there for 11 years of my life. It is a Catholic elementary school, but I started way before then. I started there when I was three years old um, with preschool, then I did JK and SK, and then all the way from grade one to grade eight. So I was there for a long time. Now for those who don't know, Saint Raphael, Raphael, however you want to say it, I, is the patron saint of finding things, I do believe. And it didn't work on me, I guess, you know? It's one of those questions you gotta ask yourself of, okay, I am who I am now, but if I was born 300 years ago, would I still be that person? And I think in my case, obviously no to a lot of points, like how I use technology, you know, that's definitely changed me. But when it comes to my religiosity, I think I would remain the same because I specifically remember being five years old and I've already been to church like a hundred million times at that point. And I was at the side of my house and it was like a beautiful sunny day. And I was like, okay, I haven't taken this thing seriously up to this point. I'm gonna really try right now. And so I kind of squatted down on the side of my house and I put my hands together and I just prayed. And I was like, give me a voice. Is anyone there? Talk to me. Like, let me feel your presence, that kind of a thing. And for a lot of people, this works. They, if they don't uh, outright hear voices or see visions, they'll still feel a presence of God with them. And me as this small child, very susceptible to ideology, I, I really gave it my all and felt nothing. There was absolute, complete radio silence. And I would still consider myself being religious all the way up until high school, but it, it just wasn't there, you know? My, the wiring in my brain just wouldn't allow it. And then funnily enough, I, I lose my religion going into grade nine, grade 10 kind of a thing. And then by the time I'm 20, and this is something I've already talked about where I, I had an accident. And in that moment, I probably had what a lot of people would describe as a religious experience. I, I had a, an amazing vision come to me and it was basically the story of my first book, Deviance. But it's funny how religion didn't give me a religious experience, but creativity did. And I think that's similar for a lot of people, artistic individuals feel uh, uh, an overwhelming sense of euphoria and otherworldliness sort of take them over. A lot of the times people will describe it as saying, I didn't come up with that idea, that idea came to me. You know, like almost like uh, the, the great beyond touched my brain and then uh, gave me this incredible vision or whatever it is. I, I guess that's why I love storytelling so much because I, you know, when I was 20 years old, I had that uh, intense experience where I was in a lot of pain and I, I sort of had a vision. 
but yeah, that's my uh, growing up tale with religion and, and where it's taken me now to this point, which is uh, atheism, I guess. But, so we got that story. Another one I want to talk about, it is the year 2023, and I started this YouTube channel in 2013. The way I started it was that I was turning 20 years old, so this was before all of that stuff happened, and my girlfriend at the time had broken up with me, I was in dire straits. I dropped out at Niagara College. I think I didn't have a job at the time. I just, I needed something to do. I was drinking heavily, I was feeling lonely, and so I wanted to get back into making videos like I did when I was in high school with Comtech. And so that's what I did. Didn't have a lot of ideas of what I was doing at the time. It was very random, the videos I made, but I made them until I eventually stopped and then picked it back up in 2019 once I stopped drinking and I wanted to get back into filming in the film industry. And so that's where we find ourselves now. 10 year anniversary, this ring around, I'll be turning 30. So now let's go over just what this year has been like, the one that just left us, 2022. I finished a season working on Blue's Clues and You. I traveled to America to meet an old friend that I never met before. I road tripped to the East Coast to St. John, which I had never done before. That was the longest I've ever driven, just me. I've done that twice now, actually. This friend in America that I met, uh, the short film that we had co-wrote together, made it into film fests, so that was very exciting. I started uh, doing reactions to Indian movie trailers, which was, you know, fun but short-lived. I busted out some banger thoughts videos. I started my Trends with Joe Van videos, which I absolutely love doing. And I started working at a place called Mad Science, and that has since uh, ended, but that was an incredible experience. And then meanwhile, the whole world happened. Ukraine got invaded by Russia. Iran went into protest to try to save their women. Elon destroyed Twitter. Women lost their bodily rights in America, and more stuff. So now, uh, what about the future? What does 2023 hold? Well, as I stated earlier, focus. I'm going to focus on the four main topics of the, the movie reviews, Monkey and reviews, thought pieces, and trends with Jovan. And I want to try to incorporate the stuff that you guys feed back to me. I think that's really important. I want to make sure that any and all voices are heard. So whether you guys are just here for the Monkey videos, whether you're just here for the movie videos, or anything else in between, I appreciate all of you guys so much. And so now, before tailing this thing off, I actually want to do an in-depth movie review. Uh, not just of 2022, but it'll start the trend for moving forward. So I'm just going to pass this off to In The Past Joe, who's going to take it over from here, and then I'll, I'll close things off. Thanks for the baton, past future Joe. How's it going, everybody? This is In The Past Joe. This is what it used to look like. Can you believe it? So this segment will be me going over top five films of the year, now that the year has ended. We're starting things off with everything, everywhere, all at once. In my opinion, this is, uh, I was just about to reference it to something, but I don't think I can. There's nothing like this movie. It's just its own movie. The two directors, the, the Daniels, had made a previous movie, Swiss Army Man, and that one was uh, equally as weird as this one, but it was more niche. Not as many people liked it. This one, however, uh, came to the top of most people's lists. It's how, like how unique it is. The way that it plays with the multiverse, which they had written this before Marvel started doing its multiverse thing. So it, it was a unique idea at the time, even though now it's being played around with a lot more in Hollywood. And the way that it's able to take such broad concepts and make it so intimate with its main character and her family is amazing. This is the easiest recommendation of this year, and if you haven't seen it yet, I don't care if you don't like sci-fi or think multiverse is too weird of a concept, this is the movie to see of 2022, so go out and see it. Next we have RRR. This is a Bollywood slammer. I've made a review of this one as well, so that one is worth checking out. Barbarian. This one is highly entertaining. The final three here came out in like the very last uh, three or so months of the year, but it's really scary slash funny. 
It did a really good job at messing with conventions. And it also kind of did the thing as Promising Young Woman, where there's this meta element of who they cast to play certain characters and how that could play into the audience's uh, perceiving of that character. Next, we have Dead Stream. This one's kind of niche. Uh, it's it's scary, but mostly hilarious. This uh, director slash main actor in this, Joseph Winter, did an amazing job at playing with the modern concept of a streamer. Twitch streamer, YouTube streamer, whatever kind of streamer you want. There, You got the old school kind of prankster bros. They're still alive and well, even though they're not getting as many hits as they used to. I feel like they're thriving on Facebook or something, I don't know. But he plays that kind of a person who then gets canceled and goes on like a redemption arc by doing, going out of his comfort zone and doing something spooky by going to a supposed haunted house. And this movie just is extremely unique and did a really good job at playing with uh, new and old concepts in a really refreshing and entertaining way. And so it starts off like kind of slow, like it's funny but slow, and then it really ramps up. And yeah, it just it took me by surprise. Like I really enjoyed this movie and I've only seen it once, but I can't wait to watch it more times. And so you're, if you're into horror comedies, I highly recommend this one. And finally, we have All Quiet on the Western Front. This one just dropped out of nowhere, in my opinion. It is uh, a German World War I film from the perspective of German soldiers, specifically frontline young soldiers that were manipulated into joining the army with promises of greatness and, you know, um, just the, the classic propaganda machine doing its thing. This film dropped like right before Remembrance Day, which is actually the day that I'm recording this. This makes me sad, but also like uh, bittersweet about the human condition. Like terrible things like the war machine exist, but alongside it is just the human spirit. In the end, war is always like really a class war. It's the rich sending the poor out to fight for them and to die so that they can have more land and more territory. War is never justified. Yeah, so uh, the, it's an easy recommendation and the last one for this movie list. So I really hope you guys enjoyed and you know, back to future Joe. Bye-bye. Okay, so there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if you agree with a lot of those or if you completely disagree with all of my choices. But either way, I'm looking forward to an amazing 2023. I hope you guys are too. I wish you guys nothing but love in your life. And let's just close this sucker off. I appreciate you, and I'll see you guys in the future. Hey, oh, God. Oh, oh. oh, it's just you, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You were just <sighs> having a dream about the water pills. <sighs> Yeah, I guess it was just a fever dream. Oh my gosh, I've had this flu for so long. Wait a minute. I didn't tell you what I was dreaming. How'd you, what do you, how'd you know about that? What do you, uh, what's going why on? Why did you have to say that? I really liked you, but you have to be silenced. I do this for all the bald kings and queens. Hey, why are you looking at me like that, man? Wait, Go ah, quiet ah, into that ah, good ah, night, ah, Jovan. Ah, S-H-H-H-H-H. Ah, That's better. Ah, You're gone. Ah, okay. Time to drink some water. Hi, John Zana here. Thank you for watching the JillVan.com. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you do, all your dreams will come true. I like ice cream. All hail Canada. Bye bye.